Welcome to 5 and 5 from the One Stop Co-op Shop, where I discuss five key elements of a game in about five minutes. I'm Michael Kelly, and today I'm looking at one I've eagerly anticipated, Solomon Kane from Mythic Games. And a quick thank you to Mythic Games for sending me a review copy of this one. I'm a big fan of the original Solomon Kane stories, and I was excited to see how they were adapted into board game form, but does the game live up to its source material, at least for me? Let's find out and get to the list. So first for my number five, which is a mix, I wanted to talk about the campaign structure and kind of the replay value in the box. On the positive side, there are a lot of campaigns in here. I think 10 and each of them will take two or three or even four hours. So you're looking at a lot of content, even if you only play through each one once. But on top of that, each of the campaigns has generally two or three or even four branching paths where you can see different scenarios or like have a fight where in another place you would have talked. So it can be fun to replay those, but on the next negative side, although the storybooks are very thick, you'll quickly find that a lot of it can be pretty redundant because some of the branches aren't that interesting. It'll be like, oh, if you beat the scenario this quickly, you go to 12A, but if you do it more slowly, you go to 12B. But the only difference is like one different miniature is on the board or you have one more round to finish it. And I also have a mix for my number four, which is sort of your opposition in the game, the darkness cards and the shadow miniatures. On the positive side, the darkness cards are pretty quick to resolve. You draw one at the end of each player's turn, but at the same time, they can be pretty impressive in the different effects they have and in how they handle a ton of miniatures on the board moving in diverse ways. And as for the shadow miniatures, they present you with a fairly interesting tactical puzzle because they keep on spawning and moving towards Solomon Kane. but that's also where the main negative comes in for the opposition, at least for me, in that some scenarios especially just have these shadows kind of spawning over and over again and nothing else too interesting is happening, like you're just moving Salomon Kane around. So it can sometimes get a bit repetitive and dull to use all your dice to summon your virtue, blow up some shadows when they move in, do it again, blow up some more shadows, rinse and repeat. And I also have a mix at number three. Yes, there are a lot of them in this review. And that's focusing on the chapters that make up a campaign and specifically the pacing and variety in them. And on the variety end of things, this is generally a pro because these chapters throw some really wacky, diverse experiences at you. You might have some chapters with no boards at all where you're just racing to build up resources, but then that might be followed by an intense battle or a talking scene in an inn where you run around from patron to patron. But that variety can also sometimes be a hindrance because of some pacing issues, because some of the chapters are incredibly quick and some of them tend to drag on a little bit longer than you would want them to. And that can especially be a problem when you have to set up three or four tiles and like sometimes five or 10 or 15 miniatures. If you do all of that and then end up playing the chapter for only five or 10 minutes, it can be kind of a bummer. But hey, I'm finally going up to a full-on pro for my number two, and those are the discovery cards and the narrative potential in the game. Because man, oh man, this game really creates narrative moments and story opportunities that I would never expect to see in a board game. It really reminds me more of an RPG being run by a game master. And that's generally thanks to the diversity in the scenarios, which I already mentioned, as well as these unique discovery cards that give you little challenges to overcome or make characters change as you talk or interact with them. I mean, go watch my playthrough video. I wrestle with a ghost and try to convince people in an inn to help me and chase down things across the swamps. It's crazy. But I am going to end with point number one on a mix, although it leans pro with me, and that's really focused on what's actually the core gameplay of the game. Dice placement, card play, and action tests. And on the positive side, I generally like the dice and the cards. You're not rolling too many dice, maybe between three and six, but you play these cards to the left and right of your board unique to the virtue you're playing that give you different action options from turn to turn. Now, there are two main negatives for me that can bring it down to a mix. First of all, in some of the chapters, there are only a couple of actions that are viable, like sometimes you just want to move or you just want to fight. And in those situations, the usually cool dice placement and card play can start to feel a bit repetitive because you keep on doing the same thing. And the other negative, although this gets pretty specific, is in the fight test. Now, to be clear, there's actually not that much combat in the game, but when you do have combat, you'll do tests like in the rest of the game. But depending on how well you do, you'll have to draw two or three or four of these fight effect cards. And just digging through the deck and finding them can be kind of annoying. And really, it wouldn't have been that hard for them to just put the effects right on the card because usually they're things like deal one damage or stun the enemy. So overall, I would recommend Solomon K 
entertain to people who love big narrative games with an epic feeling, and also to people who like RPGs and are looking for kind of an RPG in a board game feel, because the diversity of options here really gives that sense. I also might recommend it if you like dice placement or tactical card puzzles. On the other hand, you should definitely avoid this one if you don't like big narratives and a lot of reading, because that's the majority of the gameplay. Also, if you're looking for a combat-heavy dungeon crawler, this is not it. Yes, it has tiles and tons of cool miniatures, but you're not really fighting that often. And if you'd like to see the game in action, I've got a playthrough for you. I somehow managed to fit over four hours of footage into a 90 minute video with a lot of me narrating. So click on the link that just popped up if you'd like to check that out. Good gaming and I'll see you at the next stop.